back to another Rose City Reptiles video. Today we're going to be doing an epic dream come true type of tour looking at all these tegus. I've got Braden here from SMS Morphs. He's here actually to pick up some tegus because he's going to be in Tinley. I will not be there this time, but he's going to be in Tinley and he's going to have some of my tegus that we hatched out this season. And towards the end of the video, we're actually going to show you some of those babies that he's going to be bringing. So if you're going to Tinley, make sure you go and check out SMS Morphs booth to check out some of these amazing tegus and pick one up from Brayden. So, but since he's here and we might as well do a little tour and look at some of his favorite tegus that, that I have and just show you guys around the place. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. <music> So this part of the yard are the dog kennel conversions into lizard kennels. So lots of dog kennels here and lots of beautiful tegus living inside. Up first, you can't have a tour at Rose City Reptiles without getting out Plague. This dude is incredible. I don't think I've seen him in person. You haven't? No, I don't oh, think so. That's, yeah, he's a beast. Hey. Is he bigger than yeah, what you thought? Yeah, <laughs> definitely a lot bigger, a lot, lot darker. Yeah, no, in yeah. person, that's the thing. That, I mean, it, the camera actually pulls out more whites. And like, in person, yeah, you he has thought that. very little white on him mm -hmm. at all on down his back, but the camera pulls it out. Yeah. He's darker in person. That's why one of these times I need to do Tinley and bring. Bring plague. an adult. <laughs> bring plague. Can you get him out here in the sun? Maybe that helps a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy with the he's camera. Just like gray when he's in the sun. Yeah. No, nothing. Nothing is as good as in person. Yeah. You definitely have the best view right now. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's that's plague. We're gonna continue down the line. Braden had one tegu specifically that he wanted to see here. Kind of jealous you got him. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so let's head down here. We might look at some of these other ones soon. I know this is where Legacy's at. But right here, we've got a special boy in here. Here is Sacred. So this guy was actually a gift that I got from got Zach at line. Sacred Geckos and Exotics at the last Tinley show. So. He's so tame. He's amazing. He's always pretty chill. In that winter shed already? Yeah, he already has yeah, that he, winter this coat. Yeah, very dull looking. Yeah, he's, he's like a hot pink all summer. He looked incredible. So we did not produce with him this season, but next year we're going to make it happen. What are you going to try and pair him to? An anery female okay. to get the double hats. And then I got something else that I'll talk about later. Okay. So <laughs> doing something a little bit different with him. Okay. So best thing to do in this. Yeah. Sometimes. So yeah. But he's awesome. Not as big as Plague, but no. But he's still growing. But he's only he. T I believe he turned three this year. Okay. So. So he'll get what Mako size roundabout. I think so. Okay. Still a big tegu. Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome. And red albinos can see just fine. That's what I've heard and that's what I've seen with him is that there's no vision okay. impairment okay. at all. So, which is, that's a pretty cool thing. <laughs> he's so dusty. So yeah, the, the reds have some incredible morphs right now. I mean, with the anaries, mm -hmm. albinos, and the snows, and then there's the I'm seeing melanistic. The hypos. Yeah. And mel I don't know a lot about those, yeah. but there's just a lot going on with reds. Okay. And it seems like there, there's not a morph that affects them negatively at all. Okay. Which is always, from a breeder standpoint, that's that's great. Beautiful. That's an amazing thing. So and then you get different colors and patterns for pet quality stuff. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah. I'm excited about red albinos and producing some in the future. I'm definitely. I'll have to get a double hit from you at one point. We'll make it happen <laughs> for sure. We'll make it happen. But here's sacred. 
We're gonna get him back. I'm gonna put him all the way back into his little hide. All right, so we got Tsunami here. You know why we gave him Tsunami? Because mm -mm. you know like what surfers okay. are like ride yeah. the wave. Yeah. Oh, back. the back toe, okay. <laughs> so his back toe is. Also, he has like a shattered pattern. Yeah, he has that shattered pattern, which is kind of like. Chaotic so that's one thing tsunamis. people ask me a lot on the babies on what the baby's gonna look like. This is what Joey was breeding for, was a shattered pattern. Mm -hmm. And that's what the female has too. True. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that clutch, so, especially. And he actually has some nice coloring, but mm -hmm. right now he's just slowing down for winter yeah. and he's got that thick shed on. Okay. But he is a beauty. He's got a great personality, even though he kind of opened his mouth at me. <laughs> that's, you know how they are. Waking them up. Y'all know how they are. Most people <laughs> that watch my channel have tegus and everybody knows Waking up tegus, they don't always enjoy it, but these yeah. sleeves make it possible. Without these sleeves, I would be all cut up right now. But, but yeah, so that is Tsunami. <laughs> Total sense why I would feed papaya. That's the same reason why I feed guava. Any fruit that is in South America, in Argentina, that's the fruit that I want to feed the most of that they're naturally getting anyway so yeah like guava and papaya yeah. and probably mangoes any tropical fruit okay. is gonna be is gonna be ideal mm -hmm. for feeding tegus but but yeah i love that papaya trees have grown and now i'm looking up videos on how to keep them alive During through the winter. winter because i've never had them get to this size and now that there's little papayas on yeah. there like that's cool if i can actually harvest my own papaya that's the goal. Just can't use that cage now. I told. I, I know <laughs> that cage doesn't close, but I decided I want to do like a row. Okay. Because like it, they grow. All this is is just from seeds falling yeah. on the ground. So obviously, if I tried to grow them, I could. So I could just till up a row right here. That's my plan this next year. Okay. Once I get my tractor back, yeah. <laughs> till up a row right here, do a drip line, and then just drop seeds in and have a whole row that goes the length of the cage yeah that'll give me late afternoon shade because mm -hmm. you know the trees they grow extremely fast but then but yeah have a row and see what what'll happen like if i can actually get a bunch of trees going and that's what you wanted in the first place was kind of grow your own stuff mm -hmm. so and this is like this most fruit trees you know you plant it and you might harvest something years down the mm -hmm. road these are a short-lived tree they only live a handful of years okay but they, and they produce year one. So like you plant it and you can get fruit from it okay. that same year. So it's kind of nice not having to wait a long time, but then also they, they don't live a long time. Yeah. She's crazy. Okay. So we'll... Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, that blue is... See the blue? Yeah. Blue? But that's because she's so dark. Okay. See how dark she is? Yeah. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Ooh, okay. Okay. So you always see these high white blues. Uh huh. I've never seen a high black. I guess. Yeah. I mean, she's yeah. Look at how dark she is. But I love her look, and you see how nice her babies look. Yeah. Like her babies are incredible. They're gorgeous. And this was paired with tsunami. tsunami. And she's head albino? They're both head both? albino, okay. yeah. That's why they're Yeah, so you guys are if you like her look, Brayden's gonna have some of her babies at Tinley. We're gonna show you those babies here in a little bit, but we bred tsunami to stormy. So and oh oh <laughs> that would hurt. Is it getting close there? That would hurt. But yeah, so we bred Tsunami and Stormy, and they produced some gorgeous babies. And they have great personalities. Yeah. <laughs> she Just could too. Enough. She takes, she's gonna, she is she's going warmed up to me quite a bit, believe she, it or not. They all are a little bit information. Right yeah, they are. And they They're heading into that don't direction. really like being handled too much. Okay. But yeah, but yeah, so these were the very first enclosures I ever built. They've had to be reinforced a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> to make them okay. take you safe. But the way I built them, I mean, they've been moved and like literally flipped over a six foot fence. <laughs> and then 
at one when we got them here there was like a fence here and yeah. they were flipped over that okay we were rough with them and they and how out. long ago did you build them <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> probably five six years ago i think more like eight years eight years oh, ago wow. so they're holding up good yeah still. so these are like eight years ago I eight year say... old cages i copied gis herps he made some like this and i just like saved every picture he posted <laughs> I want to say and that was around the time Shell was a baby, so that's why I'm guessing that. But I don't just did my best recreating it. Okay. But I'm happy with them. They, they look good. I mean, they're like these, but probably a little cheaper. A little cheaper. <laughs> that deep in the shed. He's so, good, though. He's so dark. We've got <clears throat> beautiful, the one and only Mako. Had this boy since he was tiny, like a size of a pencil. But and he's. You. You got him from who? Laura, Laura Roberts. Roberts. Yeah. Back when Annery just came out, okay. I was hoping I would get some Anneries. He did not prove out, okay. but he did prove out to be an amazing breeder and producer. And you can, I mean, his color. Yeah. He's almost, like when he's freshly shed, he almost looks purple. Okay. Like he has a purple look to him. With the shed there. Yeah. It's quite the jowls on him. Yes. And look at his eyes. Isn't it crazy how they're so red? Okay. And you paired him to something different this year. Yeah, so we bred him with a tribrid female. Okay. I've had this tribrid female for years. I got her when I got all these other tegus from Greg Power. Okay. I dine animal. And so yeah, so I had that beautiful female. I've tried breeding her with several males. It just never happened she, I she would ovulate but nothing would happen whenever males would attempt to breed with her mm -hmm. but yeah this year I decided to put her because she is a tribrid and I've tried other tribrids and I've tried a blue I decided to try a red male and it worked. they produced <laughs> one of my favorite clutches of all time like okay. Mako and Trinity produced some gorgeous absolutely gorgeous babies you know because you've had yeah. some and i actually kept two from that clutch <laughs> it takes a lot for me to keep yeah. two but yeah i kept two from that clutch because they're just so gorgeous and you're gonna have some of these at tinley we got this some weekend, yeah. we got some picked out for you so but yeah so mako with a beautiful tribrid female i'm excited to see those babies get bigger i expect them to have a lot of his like base red color but with her pattern so okay yeah you know like that's that. how a lot of them yeah. look like they have his coloring but then they have her big bold black bars mm -hmm. or whatever's going on with them so they are gorgeous i think it's a good mixture and and then he's just one of the og studs yeah. here he's been one of you gotta love him my most <laughs> consistent fantastic breeders my first tegus i ever hatched out he oh, was really? the dad yeah him and Ryder. those are my first tegus i ever hatched i'll never forget that uh huh. He's got some shed that hasn't come off. It's not ready. So he's a little huffy and puffy because we woke him up. You guys, these guys are like teenagers going through puberty <laughs> over here. When you're trying to wake them up in the mornings, they do not particularly like it. But he's being great, just huffing. So a lot better right. than the other females. Yeah, they <laughs> wanted to. They yeah, <laughs> they were definitely trying to get me to put them down where he's just kind of chilling here. But yes, everybody loves the jowls. <laughs> right. All right. Get him moved back in. All right, so we're gonna do something pretty cool for you guys. One, we're gonna show you the dad to some of the albinos that Braden's gonna have in Tinley. This here is Topaz. If you guys have been watching the channel, you definitely know who Topaz is. One of our main studs <laughs> each season this guy's produced a lot of babies for us but this year we bred him to a beautiful albino female topaz is het for albino which means he carries the albino gene and produced some beautiful albino babies so we're going to show you the female that we bred topaz to as well as some of the babies that Braden's going to have this weekend at tinley but but yeah topaz it's pretty amazing male here Got some, he's a big boy. There's really no telling how many children he has. <laughs> it's a lot. We could total it up. 
And he was your first Tegu, correct? I had some before him. Is this my... He may be my first blue. First yeah, blue. I want to say okay. he was first blue. He's maybe my first blue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bought several Tegus right around this time. Okay. You know, where I was first getting my collection yeah. going. But he was definitely one of my first, you know. Getting started. And getting started, yeah. Okay. And, I mean, that was definitely a great purchase. Did you get him before or after Vanessa? Before. Yeah. So one thing I would, I mean, that's what I recommend to anybody who's starting to breed Tegus is to get something that's had albino yeah you know sometimes getting an albino is cost too much at least for me it did i didn't have any albinos i just got hets and you know getting vanessa him had some others and then we did eventually get an albino tegu mm. but but yeah getting the hats really set us up in the future for sure that was a great thing to do instead of just talk about really investing in like good mail no yeah. yeah having a good mail is is everything so business decision albino or head albinos is going to be good pet quality your albinos aren't going to be able to see as well on the blue albinos at least yeah yeah they do have so, some some vision impairments but it's nothing that stops them from yeah they're still going to eat they're still going to you know explore a little bit it's just they're not going to be as aggressive in a way yeah they might not show as much fear because they might not see yeah. something <laughs> see that it. another like like if i have topaz out here he can see any bird flying in the sky mm. right but if i have an albino they may not see that yeah so they just don't react to it right but but topaz would definitely see that mm -hmm. he would see he sees everything very observant and picks up on any movement you know, it can be a vulture mm -hmm. 100 feet up in the sky and he's going to see it. So, so yeah, that's a big, big difference between the albinos and normals is, you know, they do have a little bit of vision impairment, but that also varies. Yeah. So, and that's another reason why I do a lot of het to het mm -hmm. or het to visual. I would never do an albino to an albino, even though I've seen people doing that yeah. recently. When I first started off with Tegus, that was a definitely no. a no no. Like you would, it was questionable if you wanted to breed a hat to a, a visual. visual. And but people do that, and I think that's fine. Breeding uh, an albino to an albino is just it seems a little bit irresponsible to me. Okay. But I'm sure people that do it, maybe they just don't know. And you have some success with it. It's just it's not going to be as. Yeah, you have some success. Yeah. But yeah, I just worry just like in the long run, the health of the babies, mm -hmm. their vision. And then if someone takes that albino that's produced from an albino to an albino and they take it and they breed it to another albino, yeah. you know, then, how many generations down is it going to Yeah, Yeah. Uh huh. So, so my favorite thing to do is het to het, but we did breed Topaz to a visual albino female. Mm -hmm. You ready to go see her? Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. So it doesn't get much better than an albino tegu. This girl is absolutely gorgeous. We are currently standing in front of the 32 enclosures that we built once we got that huge collection collection from Hector in Florida. You guys, a lot of you guys have seen that series. But yeah, so this is that area and we've got this stunning, stunning tribrid albino female she is absolutely gorgeous i love her yellow and blacks that she has but i wanted to bring her out to show you what the babies turn into Braden's holding a couple babies that he's going to have this weekend he's going to have these exact ones we picked out some beautiful babies here is a tribrid this is her son so you guys can see the resemblance this one actually has more color than what she has and I expect him to keep a lot of that orange and then over here we've got a pure blue albino so absolutely stunning babies and right here with their with an adult albino tegu so wanted to give you guys a good idea of what these turn into what these little guys turn into as adults stunning easy to handle lovely lovely tegus got some of the babies hand selected and picked out 
for Tinley. What are the dates? 12th and 13th. The 12th and 13th. So that's this weekend. That's very soon. It's probably tomorrow and the next day at the time that you're watching this video. <laughs> so we've got some amazing babies picked out. He also already has some at his house that you're just going to have to go to the show and see them if you <laughs> want to see them in person. But we're going to have some blue albinos and some tribert albinos. Absolutely gorgeous. There's a couple more in here hiding down in the sphagnum moss. You guys will have to go to the show to see those. And then in here, we've got some pure reds. These are from Crime Scene. So we're gonna have some Crime Scene reds. We've got three of those available at the show. And then up next, these are from Mako and that tribrid female we were talking about. So gorgeous, amazing. And you have a couple of these at home yes. still. This one, I mean, this one's gonna sell so fast. She is amazing. So, beautiful babies here, ready to go. Any RBC Tinley this weekend. Y'all go and check out um, Brayden. I'm gonna have his links down below to SMS Morphs, to their Instagram and their Facebook. Y'all go check them out, give them some love. And thank you guys so much for joining us on this Rose City Reptiles tour. How was it? I enjoyed it. All right. <laughs> A lot of cool stuff I wasn't expecting, so. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Peace out, you guys.